be laying on this thing exotically right now. What's happening guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at the 2020 Ford Mustang GT. Available with two different transmissions, either a 10-speed automatic or a 6-speed manual. This thing, 5-liter V8, is going to push out 460 horsepower, 420 foot-pounds of torque. It is a cannon and I'm excited. The one that we're looking at today, it's got the 10-speed automatic transmission. It's got the GT performance package and it's got the active valve exhaust. Let's have a little bit of fun. This is going to be good. liter v8 engine guys and guess what there's a tiny little bit of space underneath here so if you wanted to you could supercharge this bad boy there are a couple guys from the mustang club locally that have put a supercharger in this thing it's pushing out over 700 horsepower which is a little bit ridiculous but at the same time it's a mustang gotta have a little bit of fun with it right let's have a closer look inside misconception when it comes to these things. People think that you have to use premium gas. However, it is okay to use the 87 regular gas, the 87 octane. That's okay. But like any sort of performance vehicle, you use that higher octane, that 91 premium, you're going to get better performance out of it. Filling it up really, really simple. All we're going to do, tap on the side here, and then it is a capless fill system that we've got in the Mustang. All right, looking at the key fob on this thing, we've got our unlock button, our lock, remote start, our trunk, as well as our horn or a panic button. Now, for whatever reason the key fob dies, you need to get emergency access to the vehicle. All you're gonna do is pop down here and we're gonna lift up. And as you can see, we've got that emergency access key. Slide it back into place. Now, this is the automatic version of the vehicle, which is why we've got the remote start. In order to remote start it, all we're gonna do is press the lock button once and this button twice. And then in order to turn off the remote start, you're just going to press this button one more time. Opening up the trunk is pretty straightforward. All we're going to do is hit this button here twice. Let's have a look inside. Okay. Looking in the back here, now this one does have the upgraded sound system as well, so it is a 12 speaker sound system. And lifting up underneath, so as you can see here, we've got an inflator kit. So the inflator kit is there, so we've got the tire inflator here underneath. We've got the goop that you can use to seal up any sort of tire puncture that you may have. There is a four year life cycle on these things where you should get that goop replaced after four years. Now, one hidden trick that not a lot of people know about Mustangs is that you can use the key fob in order to open up the windows. So as you can see here, we've got the unlock button at the top here. We're gonna press that three times, and then on the third one, we're gonna press and hold. There you go, guys, remote window unlock. Now, looking at the driver's side door here, as you can see, pretty straightforward. We've got our traditional driver and passenger side window buttons up and down. A little bit further up here, we've got the ability to adjust our side view mirrors. So all we're going to do to adjust the side view mirror, left side for the driver, right side for the passenger, and then you're going to use the directional keypad in order to be able to adjust the actual mirror. Moving up a little bit. Now, this is the 401 version of the vehicle, so the premium version, which means it's got leather seats, but the seats are also power adjustable which is really, really cool. So we do have our seat memory buttons there, and that's gonna be good for the seat position. The only one you've gotta manually adjust is gonna be the backrest. Now, adjusting the seats on this thing is fairly straightforward. As you can see here, we've got a couple different buttons. One thing to point out, if you want to adjust the backrest, we are gonna use this lever here in order to move it forwards and backwards as necessary. Moving down here, as you can see, we've got a little lever here. 
pushing it forward is going to move the seat forward. Pushing it backwards is going to move the seat backwards. If it's a little bit too high or low, no worries. All we're going to do is lift the stick up, raises this up a bit. As they get closer to the top, dropping it back down is going to lower that seat back down. Other button here we've got is our lumbar support, so we can use that in order to give us a little bit more support and stabilization for our lower back. Pretty cool. In order to be able to turn on the fog lamps, all we're going to do is press this button here. Next up, we've got the selector switch for our running lamps. So there's only two that I want you to focus on. All the way to the left is going to turn them off. All the way to the right is going to be auto. So your daytime or your nighttime lamps are going to come on as necessary. It's going to do it automatically for you. So unless you're racing, I recommend you keep it on the auto setting. Off to the right hand side here, we've got a plus and minus button. This is going to allow us to adjust the intensity of the light on our instrument cluster. So we can increase or decrease that light if we'd like to. In order to be able to adjust the steering wheel on this thing, by your right knee here, just underneath the steering wheel, there's going to be a little lever. We're going to crank that lever down. As you can see, it pop down here. And the steering wheel is telescopic. So we can move it in or out as necessary, up or down as you'd like. Once you've got that perfect position, you're just going to take that lever, lock it back up into place, and you're set to go. When you first start the vehicle, this is the screen that you're going to be met with. So as you can see here, we've got our navigation, we've got the station that we're currently tuned to, or if our phone is connected or an MP3 player, this is going to be whatever song's playing. We can add a phone in, or we can turn on or off the heated steering wheel. Moving down to the bottom here, we've got our audio settings, so on our sources, we can go between AM, FM, Sirius, CD player! How old school and amazing is that? So CD player here, as well as our Bluetooth stereo. Moving back, in order to tune to a different station, we can either use the voice command button on the steering wheel, we can manually tune here, or we can do a direct tune here instead. So tons of different options there. In order to be able to save a preset, or in order to save a station, all you're gonna do is tune to the station that you'd like, and then you're just gonna press and hold, and it's gonna save that station for you there. Moving into climate now. So if we look a little bit further down here, as you can see, we've got a few options in order to control some of the fan settings. However, the majority of the settings are going to be in this Sync 3 screen here. So starting off, we've got our auto mode, and that's gonna let the vehicle determine what the interior temperature of the vehicle should be. Menu, we can turn on our max AC, max windshield defroster, or our heated steering wheel. We can turn it on, we can turn the fan, I should say, on or off as necessary. We can also turn on the dual zone climate control. So by default, it's going to take whatever the driver's setting is. So as you can see here, it's adjusting as we go. Now let's say if, let's tune that down just a tiny little bit. Now let's say if the driver, or the passenger I should say, or the driver, if they like it a little bit cooler or warmer. So what we can do now is we can adjust one side, and as you can see, it's bumped up, but it's kept the driver's side setting. Now if you'd like to, if you want to reset to the driver, all we're going to do is hit that dual button again, and it's going to default to the driver's setting. Looking here, we've got the ability to blow the fan to the windshield, to our face, or to our feet, and this is going to be the intensity of the fan here. This is our air circulation button, so it's either going to pull air from outside of the vehicle, or if it's turned on, it's going to circulate the cabin air instead. We've got our rear windshield defroster, as well as turning on the air conditioning using this button here. Next up, we've got our phone settings. So we can easily add a phone here. All we're going to do is press this add phone button. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. And on your device, you're just going to make sure that Bluetooth is turned on. Perfect, and then as you can see, so it's got the Mustang here. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Well, the pin matches, so we're gonna hit pair and yes. We're gonna get another message here, safety, allow- Please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Thanks, Sync 3. <laughs> One more message is gonna pop up allowing your contacts, so we're gonna hit allow to that as well. Now, 911 assist, the only way you're gonna be able to use that is if your phone is connected. So we're just gonna hit yes to that as well and then automatically download our contacts when the phone is connected. Now, as you can see, we've got my recent call list, contacts, we've got a do not disturb mode, we can look at text messages, etc. In order to be able to remove a phone from the vehicle, we're going to go to our settings here, jump up into phone, and as you can see, we can view devices, manage contacts, ringtones, etc. So we're just going to go to view devices, and as you can see here, we've got my iPhone. Of course, this is going to happen. 
All right, now we've got the ability to either just straight disconnect from the phone or we can completely remove it. So if we hit remove, yes, the phone's now gone. Jumping back into phone, as you can see, there's no more phone, so my phone's no longer connected to the vehicle. Now, one of the nice things about the GT Premium is that it does have built-in navigation, so you don't have to rely on your phone. If you're using the navigation, it's really straightforward. So we're just gonna hit search, start typing the address, go a little bit slower, start typing in the first few characters and then pause. It's gonna auto-populate it for you. We're just gonna select the address that we wanna go to. And you can do one of two things. You can either save it as a favorite or you can start in order to start or going. Obey traffic laws, be alert, and use voice commands while driving. There we Please go. Please proceed to the highlighted route and then the route. We can guide. mute it if you have a guidance preference. Will start. So voice guidance is now off if that's a preference of yours. In order to be able to cancel an existing route, there's a little X button at the top here. We're just going to press that and hit yes to cancel the route. Perfect. Jumping into our menu now, we've got a ton of different options here. The one to focus on is going to be our navigation settings. Starting in our map preferences here. As you can see, we've got the ability to change out some of the preferences. The big one to point out is gonna be this point of interest icon. That means that it's gonna show things like gas stations and coffee shops and things like that. So if you have a preference to show those, you just turn it on from here. Our route preferences is also another important one. Moving into our preferred route, we've got fastest, shortest, or eco-friendly. But the one to really point out would be this. So we've got avoid freeways, toll roads, ferries, or tunnels, etc. So it's really, really cool because if you don't like driving on the 407 or other toll roads, you can hit that button there and then the navigation will take that into account. So whatever your preferences are as you drive. Navigation preferences, nothing crazy there. We've got different prompts, so it's gonna be a voice and a tone, voice or a tone. And that's gonna be as we're coming up to an upcoming turn. So whether we get a tone or a voice. And last screen here, we've got our home or work. So we can set up a home or a work address here and we can save that. One of the nice things about having your home or work address set up, if you'd like to navigate home, all you have to do is press the steering wheel button and say navigate home and it's automatically gonna navigate to, it's gonna set up the navigation to your home address that you've set up here. Moving into our apps now, there are a few apps that are available in the vehicle. If your phone's connected, you've got even more, which is really, really cool. So one of the nice things about Sync 3 is it gives you Android Auto and Apple CarPlay compatibility. So if you're with your phone connected through Bluetooth or through USB on the iPhone, you can mirror your phone onto the screen. You can also use certain mobile apps on the screen as well. So things like Spotify, LiveX Live, or the Waze app, you can project onto the center console screen here. Moving into our settings now, very straightforward. Sound is gonna be for treble, bass, mid-range, etc. Jump back here, our clock settings. We can adjust the clock as necessary here, and it's gonna be in our standard 12-hour time as a default. If you have a preference for military time, you're just gonna press the button there, and that's turned us into the 24-hour clock instead. Daylight savings time, that's going to automatically adjust the clock depending on if we're in the spring or fall. So spring, we're gonna fall forward, fall, we're gonna, no, spring, we're gonna leap forward, fall, we're gonna go backwards an hour, and then into our time zone update. So if we're on the west coast, driving east, east to west, whatever the case may be, it's automatically gonna update the time zone depending on where you are. So I recommend keeping that one on. Next up is gonna be our Bluetooth. We can turn the Bluetooth off completely here if we'd like to, we can add a Bluetooth enabled device this way as well. Our phone, we've already been there. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. So that's where we're gonna go to add or manage our devices. Next up is gonna be our radio. So we've got the radio text as well. So the radio text is going to be what displays here. So without the radio text on, this essentially is gonna go away. 911 assist, as I mentioned, so the vehicle, uh, the phone I should say, does have to be connected to the vehicle in order for 911 assist to work. Navigation settings, we've already been there before. Let's go back, mobile apps. So as I said, certain apps can be reflected onto the center console screen. So things like Spotify, LiveX Live, and the Waze app can be directly shown on this console screen here. Moving into our general settings now. So we've got different language settings. So we've got English, Spanish, or French. So whatever your preference is there. Moving back, we've got our temperature units. So we can move between either Celsius or Fahrenheit. Kilometers or miles. That beep that we're getting here. So you can turn that off by pressing this button here and you'll no longer get that beep. So it's a matter of personal preference there. 
And then from here, we've got our automatic system update. So I do recommend keeping automatic system updates on, but in order to make sure that they happen, you also have to make sure that with the automatic updates, you're connected to Wi-Fi at home. And that's gonna be shown in the next screen coming up. Let's hop back here. And that, oh, right here. Uh, so we've got our automatic updates and our Wi-Fi. So connect to the Wi-Fi at home in order to be able to tweak your automatic updates there. It's automatically gonna update the firmware and the software in the vehicle. The only thing that's not gonna get updated would be the navigation. So you either have to get your service advisor at the dealership to do that for you, or you can manually download the maps yourself and you can upload them to the vehicle. Next up at the very bottom here, we've got a reset button. So if the SYNC 3 screen is giving you any issues or if you're selling the vehicle, we could do a master reset in order to wipe all the settings out that we've currently got on there. Ford Pass Connect, so the vehicle is enabled with a wireless hotspot. So if you've got an active data plan with Bell Canada in Canada, I believe it's Sprint in the US, it allows you to use your vehicle as a hotspot. So you can connect up to 10 devices on the vehicle, which is really, really cool. From here, we've got some generic vehicle settings. So as that loads up, we've got our camera settings and then our onboard serial number. Moving back now, we've got our sort of display settings. So we've got a nice display here. We can turn it off if you have a preference for that, if you don't want anything showing. Pressing again, will bring it back up. Other one to point out is gonna be our modes. So we've got the auto mode, day or nighttime mode. I personally, I love the look of the nighttime mode and that's because I love the color blue. So if we look at the nighttime mode here, so as you can see, it looks really, really nice. The option there is yours. So if you have it in the auto mode, it's automatically gonna update between the daytime or the nighttime mode, just depending on the time of day. Jumping back a screen here. And now we've got our voice control button. So if we hit the voice control button, we've got advanced mode, which is really, really cool. So I want you to take a listen for a second. Tune to 102.1. Tuning to... FM 102.1. So as you heard there, there was a little message that popped up there as we tuned to the station. So tuning to this station. Now if we turn on advanced mode, I want you to listen to what happens. Tune to 97.7. There we go. So it's changed the station for us and it hasn't given us that advance, uh, that warning saying that it's gonna be changing the station. Next up is gonna be our phone confirmation that lets us know what phone number we're gonna be calling. So it's essentially gonna be a warning like, would you like to call such and such person? Are you sure? Next up is gonna be the voice command list, which is gonna be this list here. So we can have that come up or you can hide it there. It's your personal preference. So if we turn that voice command list off and we press it again, so you can see that voice command list is now gone. Jumping back here. Now the reason why this audio volume thing keeps on happening is because the audio is currently turned down. But if we had the audio on and did that, it wouldn't keep on happening. Last one to point out is gonna be our valet mode. So valet mode essentially is going to lock out the screen. So if you've got a valet driver, they essentially can't look through your screen in order to be able to look through text messages and contacts and things like that. It's also a good security measure to do it by default. All we're gonna do is hit yes here and select a four digit pin. Something difficult, let's go one, 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 and done, one, 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 one. Please for all, don't use one, 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 one as your password. But as you can see here, the screen is now locked out. So you can't do anything on the screen until you re-enter that combination. And now it's unlocked for us again. And let's move it down a tiny little bit here. So we've got our volume rocker, so we can adjust the volume from here. We can manually tune the station using this rocker here. Next up, we can use these in order to change between stations or if we're listening to an MP3 player or our phone, we can switch between songs. Jumping into our audio here, we can turn the audio on or off by pressing this button here. Now, moving down a little bit here, we've got a ton of options that are available here. So we've got heated and cooled front seats on the driver and the passenger side. And now we've got a little bit more control when it comes to the actual climate settings here. I've got some control, I should say. So we've got the ability to adjust the driver passenger side heat and air conditioning there. So we can either go up or down here. And as you can see there, so it has turned on that dual mode. So if we get rid of dual, it's gonna to default to the driver's side there. Next up, we've got our max windshield defroster. We've got the air blowing to the windshield. We've got our reverse or our rear windshield defroster, I should say. From here, we can turn the system off completely. We can adjust the fan speed here. We can turn on our max air conditioning. We can turn on the air conditioning or we can turn it on auto and let the vehicle decide what the cabin temperature should be. Moving down here, as you can see, we do have the engine start stop button. And then we've got a series of toggle switches now. So toggle one up 
is going to turn on our four-way blinkers back down to turn it off. Next up is going to be our traction control. So one click up, one click off. And now we've got a few different ones here. This is going to be for our steering wheel. So we can go between normal steering, sport, comfort, or back to normal again. And then we've got different drive modes. So our drive modes are going to be normal, sport, track, drag, snow and wet, and then back to normal again. From here, as you can see, we've got a little USB port. And popping this little guy up, we've got a traditional cigarette lighter adapter. Now moving down a little bit here, as I mentioned, this is the automatic version of the vehicle. So we've got park, reverse, neutral, drive, and RS for sport mode, which gives us a little bit more access. The, power, the paddle shifters you can use in regular drive mode. It's just a little bit more sportier of a feel when you're in that sport mode at the bottom here. Looking at our steering wheel here to start, on the right hand side we've got our plus gear, so we can add a gear there or our minus in order to change gears. So that's really, really cool about the Mustang, the 10 speed, is that it does give you the flexibility to choose what gear you're in. Moving down to the left hand side here, we've got our volume rocker, so we can add the, we can increase or decrease the volume here, or we can mute the volume by pressing this middle button here. Next up, these two buttons here are going to allow us to change radio stations, or if we've got a phone connected, we can choose between what song we're listening to or an MP3 player, etc. Next up, the vehicle is equipped with adaptive cruise control. So turning the cruise control button on here, as you can see at the top here, that's tweaked something, so now we have the ability to set our cruise control speed. So once you've come up to the speed that you'd like to, whether you're on the highway or city driving, you're just going to press that set button there. Next one here is going to allow us to choose the distance that we are between the vehicle in front of us. So if you pay attention here, and as we press this button here, so we've got four different settings, which is going to dictate how close or how far away we are from the vehicle in front of us. Off to the right hand side here, these buttons are going to allow us to switch between some active screens here. And in order to be able to reset our screen, all we're going to do is press and hold the OK button. And that's going to reset our trip one, two, etc. This button here is going to be our voice command button. So that gives us the ability to do things such as change the radio station. We can navigate somewhere. We can make a phone call, etc. All by pressing the button here. Jumping down now, we've got our nav button. Nav is going to pull up available destinations, which is really, really cool, which means you don't have to look at that sync three screen anymore. Jumping back, so we can either press the nav button in order to get rid of it, or we can press the back button up here. Next up, we've got our phone answer or our hang up button. So if you've got an incoming phone call, you'd press the button here. In order to hang up, you'd press the button down here. Off to the side here, we've got our settings button. Now settings, we've got a ton of options. So let's go through some things. So we've got our ability to look at the trip and fuel info there. Driver assist settings, so we've got the auto engine off. So with this thing selected here, it's automatically gonna kill power to the engine in some cases when we come to a stop at a light or a stop sign. It doesn't happen all the time, it does happen occasionally. Next up we've got our blind spot system there. So blind spot system is going to let us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. And that's going to be done through this little guy right here. So that's going to highlight and that's going to go orange when somebody's entered the blind spot in our vehicle. Next up, we've got our pre-collision assist, and pre-collision assist, essentially, if the vehicle senses there's a potential oncoming collision, it's going to pre-charge the brakes. If you don't respond, using active braking, it'll automatically brake for you. With distance indication, it's going to let you know if you're coming too close to a potential collision. Cross-traffic alert, if there's a vehicle that's coming perpendicular to you, so either the left or the right-hand side, it's going to let you know. So there's going to be a chime and there's going to be a message up on the screen letting you know that there's a potential collision. Cruise control, you've either got the adaptive or the normal cruise. Guys, once you figure out how the adaptive cruise control system works, I guarantee you're never, ever going to want to use the regular cruise control again. It's a really, really cool system. Driver alert is tied into the lane keeping system. So if you get too many alerts for the lane keeping system because you're veering over into a lane without signaling, you're going to get a message saying that you should probably rest. Rear parking aid is that beeping that we're going to get as we get closer to an obstacle behind us. And then looking at the lane keeping system, we've got three different options. So an alert, aid, or the alert and the aid. The alert is going to be a, sh a, st a shake on the steering wheel, I should say. Next up is going to be our aid, which is going to actually recenter us and pull us back into our lane. And then the alert and the aid is going to do exactly that. So it's going to give you a little bit of a steering wheel shake and it's going to recenter you into your lane. Looking at the intensity now, we've got three different intensity levels. 
So we've got a high, medium, or a low setting. It's obviously whatever your personal preference is there. And perfect, there we go. So we've got our wipers now, courtesy wipe and rain sensing. So I do recommend keeping the rain sensing wipers on. You can adjust them from here if you'd like to. In order to turn the windshield wipers on, we're just gonna press down for a single wipe, or you can lift up in order to control the speed and using this to control the intensity of the speed as well. In order to use the windshield wiper fluid, we're just gonna pull the stick in towards us. And that'll turn it on from there. Courtesy wipe, if you leave that turned on when the vehicle started, it's going to give you one wipe. I don't recommend keeping that one on. Uh, there's no real benefit to doing it. Moving back here and back again, we've now got the ability to add in the miles per hour as well as our kilometers per hour there. Personal preference. And into our advanced settings, we've got the alarm. So when the is the alarm going to be turned on an exit? Easy entry exit. Do you need to actually use the unlock button on the key fob in order for the vehicle to unlock? Lighting here, so our delay, so we can either, when the vehicle is locked, how long do the lights stay on for? 10, 20, or 120 seconds. Auto high beam, really, really cool feature. Rather than grabbing that left stick here and pulling in, or pushing away to use the high beams, automatic high beams will automatically adjust the high beams. It'll turn them on or off as necessary. So I do recommend keeping that one turned on. Moving back now, we've got our lock, so we can do an auto unlock, mislock, remote unlock, etc. When the vehicle's remote unlocked, what happens? Do all doors get unlocked or just the driver door first? And that's it. From our oil life reset, we can reset the oil life here if we'd like to. If we use remote start, what happens? On the bottom here, we can turn it off completely, or we can either use, for climate control, the auto setting. So that's gonna mean that the vehicle's automatically to determine what the interior temperature should be, or we can use the last setting for when the vehicle was previously turned off. Seats and wheels, same idea. Are they automatically gonna be adjusted? And then the duration of the remote start, five, 10, or 15 minutes. Next up, that tire mobility kit. So the goop that's in there is good for four years. So you should get it replaced after four years. This essentially is gonna give you a reminder letting you know when that happens. Lastly is gonna be the windows. So the remote open, which we did cover a minute ago using the key fob instead in order to roll down those windows. And that's gonna be it for our basic settings there. And jumping down here, oh, cool, okay. So those are all of our basic settings, which means we're looking at two last buttons on the bottom here. So this is gonna be our audio button, lets us switch between what audio source we're listening to. So press it again to get rid of it, or hit that back button. And the last one, our little pony button. Uh, I swear I'm not a brony, but it's my little pony. So, oh God, that's weird. All right, so going into my mode, so you can change if you've got an active mode there. Exhaust mode, so this, the exhaust mode is only available if you've got the active valve performance exhaust. We can switch between that quiet, normal, sport, track, or a quiet start mode. Quiet start mode is good if you live in a residential neighborhood with neighbors that like to complain all the time. So quiet start mode essentially is going to keep the vehicle quiet when you first turn it on. And then here is gonna be how long it goes quiet for. So kind of neat. Track apps, we've got a ton, ton of different options here. So this really is if you're using it on a track, so it gives you a number of different options looking at brake performance, locks, etc. So cool, I love pony mode, love it. Jumping back into the pony settings here, we've now got the ability to tweak our gauges so we can show the gauges here. So as you can see, we've got a number of different things that are showing here. One thing that I didn't point out on the right side here, so we've got our oil pressure gauge as well as our vacuum gauge here as well. So we can see the vacuum gauge here rather than looking off to the right hand side there. Moving down, now we can take a look at our brake performance there as well. 
And then jumping back into pony mode and going down, we can tweak the color. So the color of the screen here, which is kind of neat. So if you have a preference there, as you can see, we can jump between a few different colors. You can create your own color there as well too, if you'd like. And then it's the same idea for the secondary color and the ambient light. Ambient light's gonna be the lights that are gonna be throughout the vehicle. So on the door handles there, in the cup holders, etc. And then lastly is going to be cluster appearance. So what we want that to look like. Again, it's all a matter of personal preference, but guys play around with this because you're going to get a setting that you absolutely love and that you end up falling in love with. But next up, let's take this thing for a little bit of uh, for a spin and have a little bit of fun with it. <laughs> oh God, I'm excited. I'm going to turn the AC on a little bit as we go. Perfect. There we go. Cooled seat is on. Perfect, all right. Guys, I'm excited. Let's take this bad boy for a spin. I was literally just in the 2.3 liter turbo and that thing, like it blew me away. So I am genuinely excited to see how this bad boy is gonna handle in comparison. Let's do it. Mm. make sure that I'm in sport mode. Perfect. Sport and sport. Just for comparison's sake, because the one that I was just in, I was sport mode active as well. There we go. Oh, sounds so nice. Same thing, like I was barely, barely even touching the gas right there and like I just picked up so damn cool it's weird it, so same thing so this one obviously is an automatic as well but I'm, I'm not gonna lie like I'm kind of digging the automatic Mustang a little bit huh I never thought that as a guy who's like literally driven standard vehicles for the last like 15 years like I'm surprised how much I like the automatic Mustang. Like, I am genuinely surprised. What are you gonna do? Okay, so one thing to note, so I've got the auto start stop on right now, but it hasn't kicked in. Now something to note, I've said this in my videos before, the auto start stop doesn't kick in every time. It is sporadic when it does it. Sometimes it just likes to do it when it wants to. Sometimes it just never happens. It really just depends on how the vehicle's feeling. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, come on. I'm already up to speed. It was two seconds, not even, it was like a second. Oh, <laughs> uh, this was mine. If this was mine, this would be a very, very different test drive. So, speaking of which, if there's anybody in Ontario that maybe wants to go on a little bit of a track ride, well, I guess we've got to do social distancing. So if you're cool with me using your Mustang on the track, I'm not against it. Just saying. I'm 100% serious too, like drop a message down below guys. Like I'll give you a shout out in the video if you've got an exotic car rental company, whatever the case may be. Let's have a little bit of fun, man. Let's let's do it, why not? All right, that's enough. That's enough of that shameless self-promoting because I want to drive different vehicles. What do you do? Okay, so one thing to point out, I do now have the lane keeping system activated. In order to activate it, you can either do it through the center console screen, or there's a button just on the left-hand side of the steering wheel there that lets you turn it on or off. You'll know that it's engaged when you see the lanes that are appearing just underneath the current vehicle speed. So looking down there, as you can see, we've got the set of lanes there. We get rid of it. Press again. So pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, 
one thing to note, you do have to be going a certain speed in order for that to turn on. And the other thing to point out, if you don't have the Ford Smart and Safe package, there are certain things that you're not gonna get. That's one of them. Come on, it's, it gets up to speed so quick. It doesn't even give the opportunity to like, to play around a little bit. I'm just, I'm up to speed, it's there. Okay, one thing to point out, the lane keeping system is on. I'm just gonna start to veer over a little bit. Oh, steering wheel shake and it's pulled me back over. All right, I get it. Safety features abound. Like I, I love the fact that Ford added that into their vehicles. Ford and obviously Lincoln as well too. Everyone's got to drive a Lincoln. All right, all right, all right. Uh, Lincolns will be next. Ooh, this is interesting. So the light is actually off right now, which means it's going to be a one at a time. What's this truck going to do? He doesn't even know. He's like, I, I don't even know, dude. Is this truck even going to attempt to... Uh, who knows? I'm just speaking now. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, he's going. Okay. That totally makes sense. But it's also equally exciting, which means that I'm going to have nobody in front of me when I get onto the highway. Ah! Oh! <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, this is going to be good. This is going to... I, I, I want to turn traction control off and, like, Tokyo Drift, just, like rip down this on-ramp here. Oh, well, we know I can't do that. That'll be for track day. Here we go. Oh my god. Woo -hoo -hoo. Holy sh Excuse me. Holy. Wow. 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 Oh, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. The power. Oh my god! That was amazing. All right, same thing. Let's put it in a little bit. Wow! When you need it, just foot down and go. Beautiful. sold on it being automatic yet but oh yeah oh that's interesting automatic downshift with rev matching okay all right i see you mustang i see what you're doing very very cool Oh, that's really, really neat. Oh, that was such like a thrill. And I was literally only on the highway, same thing for like 30 seconds or so, but damn. <laughs> such a thrill. All right, that offer for like wanting to use like an exotic car rental, like that's 100% on. Like if anybody knows an exotic car rental company, get them to reach out to me. Let's do a little cross promo. Beautiful. And this is the five liter V8. Like I can only imagine what the 350 or the GT500 are gonna feel like. Whew. Wow. Oh, that's really, really cool. And you do, you just feel like you want to open it up all the time. Like, it doesn't matter if you're on the highway, if you're on the street, etc. Like, that 2.3 there, don't get me wrong, that Mustang, it was powerful. But this is just, like, next level powerful. And this is without even work done to it. This thing is stock. Like, sure, from the factory, like, it's got the active valve performance exhaust. Ooh, it's got the GT performance pack as well. So there's that. But outside of that, there hasn't 
been anything done to it after market. So like the guys that are in that Mustang club that have thrown in a supercharger on this thing, 700 plus horsepower, like, ooh, you can only imagine what that beast would be like on the road, wow. So cool, so cool. Now again, I am in the sport mode. So like I said, sport steering, so it's a little bit stiffer. And then I'm also in the sport drive mode as well, which is gonna tighten everything up a bit. <laughs> so good. Now the question obviously then comes down to the 2.3 liter versus the 5 liter V8. Which way do you go? It's a toughie. But not really. Not really. I guess it depends. Like it really depends on like your budget. If your budget's tighter, obviously the 2.3 liter is gonna be a little bit more in your ballpark. So like, let's take this thing for a little round of boot. Oh, it's so tight. It's so tight, it's so tight, I love it. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Oh, so cool. I'm easily entertained, like if you couldn't tell, it doesn't take a lot for me to be like, oh, this is nice. I know that's a lie. If you compare it to like other vehicles that I've driven, like you can just feel it. Like when you feel power, you just know it. And this thing, like it just, it's just like raw, raw power. So cool, so cool. Beautiful. <laughs> That's really, really cool. Oh. I, I seriously, like, if I had the chat, like, I know what I would ask for for Christmas, like, in a heartbeat. Although, would I want it in ground? I guess that's it. If you, if you did a factory order at Christmas time, you'd probably get it March ish maybe a little bit sooner, and at that point you would be the next year model out as well too. It's an option. Get it in March, park it until May. Have it ready for yourself, oh yeah. I wanna just do donuts. I wanna do donuts in this intersection. I can. I can. Well, like, so I can. I just shouldn't, is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was fun. Oh, that was fun. That was good. <laughs> All right, guys, this has been the review for the 2020 Ford Mustang GT Fastback. I really, really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you did, please like and smash that like button down there. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be putting out some pretty cool videos over the course of the next couple weeks. How to negotiate with a car dealer, getting the best deal on your vehicle, how trade-ins work, all that fun stuff. If you guys have any questions, please ask them below. Until I see you next time.